Hi and welcome back to This Bites For You. So a lot of us want a webcam so that we can talk with friends, family, loved ones, take care of some business, game, you know, stream and all that good stuff, or just to have a webcam. I know my kids have been bugging me for them, but the problem is a lot of webcams are incredibly expensive. So today I have the pleasure of bringing you an unboxing and a review of the Nexigo N940P webcam. But is it any good? Let's find out here. Let's start with the unboxing and then we'll get into some product usage. All right, so then here we can see they have a resolution of 2560 by 1440 at 30 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. They're using a Sony CMOS sensor and it is a high quality glass lens a 3x digital zoom I'm not a fan of digital zoom at all it has a built-in dual noise cancelling microphone pretty interesting automatic white balance and then they show everything it includes here notice it does bring a remote which is pretty cool and UPC and all that good stuff over here so let's go ahead open it up real quick Then they have webcam covers. That's nice that they include them here. We'll definitely try that out soon. A thank you card. Nexigo 2K QHD webcam user manual. Then they bring a, feels like a very long USB cable. Let me measure that for you real quick. All right, so the cable is 6.67 feet long, which is pretty odd for a webcam. Usually it's right near the computer, but you know, that's not a bad thing. All right, so autofocus 2K webcam, next ago. It's got a piece of tape right over the lens. I'm gonna leave that on there just for right now. It's got a base here that opens up so that it'll hold on to your monitor. It's got a piece of plastic here. I'll take that off now. Yep, that is rubberized along here and along here as well. That's not rubberized there. All right, then they have here for a mount, like if you're putting it on a tripod, that's pretty cool. And then over here, it looks like they have the microphones along the back. Or maybe these are the microphones and these are speakers. That's probably what it is. It's kind of weird to have microphones along the back. All right, so let's go ahead and connect it to the computer real quick. All right, so I have the Nexigo N940 connected to my PC. The camera's on a 43 inch monitor, so I gotta look very high. It's not an issue with the camera. Now I'm recording audio with my Rode mic and video with my capture card. We're going to step into recording with the next go in one second. I just wanted you to get audio and visual from a different source. Now, I warn you, once we jump into the next go, the sound is going to be horrendous. I'm going to fix it. The mic is at 100%, so it's going to sound cringeworthy. All right, so I'm going to switch to it now. All right, so we are recording on the next go. N940P. Now, I know the audio is horrible, so what I'll do is drop it by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The audio should be a lot better by now, but we'll find out in one sec. So, I just played back the audio, it was or the video, it was horrendous. It got better when I dropped this. So, let me do another 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's see how that sounds. All right, so dropping it another five sounds a lot more tolerable. We can see that the microphone on the Nexigo N940P might not be the greatest. You definitely don't want it at 100%. You might want to drop it down to 10 or 15. You can go lower. Now, one of the things about this is the, the control is you don't really have a way of knowing if there's power. So when you saw me pressing the button, you saw that little light. The IR picks that up. The camera picks the IR up. 
I can't see that. So I didn't know if the batteries that I put in it were good or bad, and there is no indicator that is not the greatest. Now, I could turn the camera off, and now I just turned the camera off. Now I'm talking on the road. Obviously, you don't see me. Now I just turned the camera back on. Okay, so I just turned the camera back on. So it is an odd feature to have a power button on a camera, but you know it is what it is. The camera also comes with this cover here. Now that is a lens cover. I can close it here and the camera is on, but you know the lens is covered. That's their security cover. Now you want to be careful when you put that on. Right now there is a little light telling me that the camera is on, but it's covered by this little flap. Now, if you have it flipped the other way so that the flap comes out this way, you're going to cover the IR sensor. You're not going to be able to turn it on, turn it off, raise the volume, lower the volume, or zoom it in. So just be careful with that. I ran into that issue reviewing the camera. A few cool things or a cool thing is I can zoom if I wanted to. Now, if I want you to see the liquid cooling unit right there, I can just go... That's right, line of sight, IR. So you see, I can zoom in a little bit more and I can focus. Now focus zooms it out, but the fact that you could zoom in and then kind of direct your zoom without moving the camera, that is a pretty cool feature. Now the camera, and I'll show you in a second, has a tilt mechanism that you can completely do a 360 on the camera, turning it around, just complete. Mind you, you have a cable, so you got to worry about that. Then it also has, so you can put it all the way down, or not all the way back, but a pretty decent way back. So that is nice. It's relatively standard, but it is nice. Now, over here, I'm going to stop this for a second. So as you saw, we can take pictures as well. Part of the, this is the Windows camera app so and it works incredibly well now if I wanted to I can record with Streamlabs OBS and I just want to make sure I am picking up volume all you have to do is come over here click on the plus add a, a video capture device and then you know you add your source I don't want to add a different source because it might be weird for this so you can use Streamlabs OBS, Windows application, OBS Studio, and mind you, that's a little bit off shot right now. Um, it's a little off angle, but you know, easy enough to fix around. But you know, you can use showing you that you can use any app you'd like, and it is pretty nice since it doesn't bring its own app. The Windows app is free, Streamlabs OBS is free, OBS Studio is free. There's a bunch of free apps. You don't need an app. There is no driver required. Just plug it in, boom, 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 boom. Everything picks up and it just works. That's pretty nice. Now, aside from the zoom and the volume, there is also this, whoa. So now it's not just upside down and right side up. Now pressing it again flips my video. I was facing that way a second ago. Now I'm facing that way or vice versa. In order to get it back, just flip yourself over and turn yourself back again. So kind of a nice feature. The auto zoom feature, if you have a lot in the background, it's not gonna auto zoom well. Now, for example, if I do this, it may not auto zoom well. The closer you bring it, the better the auto zoom works. And the auto zoom works pretty well. I don't have a ring light over the t uh, the monitor. I have one on that other computer. So I have my regular lighting over my studio lighting. You can see one of them up here. The more light you have up here, the better. Now, if I wanted to, now just to see how it looks like, that's turning one off, then turning that one back there off, and then turning that one. Now, behind me directly, I have sunlight so that's going to help, but the more light you have on your face, 
or the object that you want to record with, the better. Now, aside from the cover and the remote, remember it doesn't bring any batteries, it brings two covers by the way. I already have one on there and then the one you saw down here. It also brings this little USB-C adapter. It allows you to plug in USB-A into USB-C in case you run out of USB-A connections. Obviously, going from USB-A to USB-C, you're not going to get a performance increase because you're still going through USB-A first. But USB-A 3.0, perfect there. You can also use 2.0 as well. Okay, so with the Nexago N940P, you can record at 1080p at 30 frames per second, or you could stop it, then come over here, and we can do 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's a lot more smooth. It looks a lot nicer. Maybe the colors aren't that great, but that a lot of that is due to my lighting. Now, if we come over here, and then we can do 1440p or down to 30 frames per second. Mind you, you're not going to notice a huge difference at 30 frames per second over 60. 60 is going to be a lot more fluid if you had a 30 and 60 comparison like we had here. If you didn't, you probably wouldn't notice. All right, so then coming over here, we can, you know, drop it even more. And I probably won't bother with that. Going back up to the camera, now we can raise the camera up to five megapixels. So what I'll do is, take a five megapixel shot there, so you can see the difference. You can actually see my Rode mic up here. And then what I'll do is drop it back down to 3.7. And just for more comparison there, but you can see we can, you know, change that everywhere here. So the Nexago N940P is a decent camera. You could see here that little cover I was telling you about a little while ago. It works pretty well. Okay, so it's got that microphone over here and a microphone right over here. So dual microphone. As I was telling you in the video, you can completely turn it around and that works nice. You can look all the way down and you can look all the way up. So you can kind of move it around as you'd like. So that is kind of cool. The cable is extremely long and this clip will help get this camera just about anywhere you wanted to. Now, as I was mentioning before, it does bring the USB-C to A or A to C adapter. It does bring one extra cover for the lens, so two in total, and the remote without any batteries. So, I like the camera, I think it's nice. Uh, I had a few issues. But most of those were my PC over there. Kind of why I jumped over to this PC and everything worked great. So I cannot blame the camera at all. The microphone is not the greatest. You heard how blaring and if you drop it, then it just, it doesn't sound right. I think they can do some more work on their microphone. Now that leads me to the pricing right now as we speak and it could drop. So definitely check in the link down below. The camera is a hundred bucks. Again, it could go down, it could go up. Check the link to verify. I think for a hundred dollars, you might want to check out a different camera. Now, if this dropped down to like 80 bucks or something, one thing you have to remember that is going to compensate that price is the fact that it's using a Sony lens. It may not even be the greatest lens, but the fact that it says Sony, they paid a little extra to get that lens. And of course, that cost has to go to you. It is a decent camera. Probably could have stayed on a different lens and gone with a better microphone or dual better microphones, but camera is great. Maybe at 80 bucks, 
probably. Now, there are other cameras at around 30 that do 2K as well as this camera, but I would probably say steer clear of those. I haven't tested them myself. I don't know how good or bad they are. I can tell you, and you could see how good the quality is on the Nexigo, but let me know down in the comments what you think about the camera. Um, I like it overall. Two things I don't like, the microphone and the price. Let me know if you have a difference of opinion. Did you love the mic and think the price is amazing or whatever else you think about it? But let me know down in the comments below what you think. Then also do me a favor, click like and subscribe. It helps me out so that I can keep bringing you reviews just like this. All right, my friends, this is Iggy with This Bites For You Up. See you guys.